Hi, I'm Red, and welcome to Good Game Well Played. I am joined by Lewis Nerno Mitchell, who is from Twitch, and he's going to be talking to us about esports and Twitch viewership. Yes. How are you going? I'm good. I've heard that esports actually makes up about 20% of Twitch viewership. Depends on where you're looking at. Some countries it's even more than that. Some countries it's mostly just lifestyle. And it also depends on what you're considering esports content. Yeah. So if somebody is just playing League of Legends in their bedroom, which a lot of people do, does that get considered esports? And it's kind of working back from there. But there is a sure. huge chunk of yeah. esports on Twitch. I mean, the whole basis of Twitch is that you're watching somebody live, you're watching something hype. I mean, if you look at sports throughout the ages, a live sports match was always way more interesting than a replay. Even if you didn't know the score, it was kind of like, I'm there, I'm experiencing it with everyone. So it's immediacy. So yeah, it's the, the ability to watch it. Like before, it was unless you were going to LAN parties, it was really hard to actually watch any sort of esports. Like people love doing it. And there is a really core group of people that did that every weekend, basically. But then when you've got something like Twitch come along, and these broadcasts can start going out to the world, and it's a global platform. So these broadcasts start going out to Sweden, to, to South Korea, to the US, and all of a sudden, you see people that are like, this is actually a viable job option now. And if I get really good, it's a really viable job option. Depends or which game. Well, it does depend on which game, but if you're talking about someone that's been playing CSGO for years and then yeah. all of a sudden they see half a million dollars, a million dollars as a prize pool, then all of a sudden they can turn around to mum and dad and go, hey, so uh, you know that thing <laughs> that... You know how you keep telling me to stop playing games all yeah, night? Yeah, it's like, well, oh. actually, I could be. But in having said that, it is the same sort of concept as sport, where these guys are elite, and to get to that elite level, it does take a lot of time and a lot of training, and you have to be really good. I mean, these guys have... I think I was reading they have the same reaction speeds as Formula One drivers. So it kind of gives you an idea, like just from a, a mental point of view, just how good they are. So I've seen some reports that say that overall viewership of esports is kind of growing, but there's been a couple leagues and tournaments yep. and stuff which see almost consistent dropping of viewers. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple. Um, I will say on a, on a whole, it is still massively growing. I mean, you've had COD XB championships. That's just done 20 million viewers. That's the biggest COD esports tournament. 20 you, million is huge. It's huge. <laughs> uh, League of Legends last year had 36 million for the World Championships. That was the biggest that they've had. But the international, while the figures haven't come out yet, they've just set the record for the world's biggest prize pool. Yep. And that is bigger than Wimbledon. It's bigger than the World Poker Tournament. <laughs> it was a $20 million prize pool. And the difference is, instead of sponsors giving them that prize money, it's all crowdfunded. I'm really looking forward to seeing the figures, because I mean, if you've got that many people crowdfunding, the whole basis was that you buy a package and you have access to watch it and you get a few more little bits and pieces. So is it now going to translate into the viewership? And I, I think it absolutely should be. And the one I think you're really talking about is the ESL One Cologne. The yeah, well, it was ESL One Cologne and also um, LOL's EU and NA LCS leagues have kind of seen dipping numbers week by I week. Mean, I think that there's always going to be peaks and troughs with anything. The ESL One Cologne one was actually at the same time as the European Championship final, the Tour de France, and Wimbledon. So it's kind of, when you think, <gasps> yeah, so when you think- This is like how they put the international on at the same time as the Olympics. I'm like, I want to watch both. Why would you do this to me? I don't, like, I don't know. Do they not see why. the crossover? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, no, but it's, it's kind of one of those things that, yeah, okay, there's... You think about CSGO, CSGO has a lot of fandom in Europe. So when you've got a European and North American focused game competing with the European Championships, even people that don't like football some, like, are going to tune yeah. into major tournaments. Yeah. But then you look at IEM, which is in Katowice in March, I believe, and that set records for ESL. So it's kind of like, in, even three months later, a record was set and then there was a dip and everyone's kind of going, well, what about the dip? It's like, yeah, but the, there's other defining factors in that. Yeah. Don't forget, you're getting more tournaments all the time. Like, it's getting a bit more spread. Before, it used to be just ESL or just Valve running their tournaments. So it's it's definitely widening the net. And then it's just kind of, it, for me, I'm really interested to see how wide it gets before it has to be pulled back in. But until the viewership goes down dramatically and people see it going, dipping across the board, it's just going to keep expanding. So have you noticed any interesting trends overall with esports viewership over the last couple of years? It's stayed pretty steady. There is growth, but it's not exponential. 
at the same time, it is, it's growing at the size that the, the leagues are growing and the arenas are growing. So yeah. it's growing together, basically. It's because you've got these leagues now that are getting bigger and bigger. People are able to watch them, they're more accessible. And you've got things like the Challenger Series. Like you, Yes, you've got the OPL and the, the Premier League, even regionally now. Uh, which didn't exist two, three years ago. And then you've got the Challenger Series, so people can aspire to get to that next level. And uh, you've got ESL now making regional tournaments. So, like, Do you think it's too much? At the moment, they're casting the net, and they're going to have to see at what point it needs to be kind of streamlined. And some of these, like, a few people are always going to come out on top. That's, that's just going to be the guys that market it the best, the guys that run their leagues the best, the guys that get the best players, um, the guys that just make it the most professional as possible and yeah. give people opportunities are the ones that are going to come out on top. But until then, you're going to have a lot of people trying different things, and it's still a really new market. Yeah. So people are going to be trying different variations. It's great because people have to come up with new initiatives, and people come up with really like ingenious ideas at times. And then you get the people going, we can fill a stadium. And someone <laughs> going, yeah, we can fill a stadium. And it's like, you imagine the first time somebody booking a like, Mercedes-Benz Arena yeah. for an esports tournament. They would have just gone, that's... A, <laughs> okay. Should, sure. Should we do okay. This? Yeah. And then you get thirty thousand, forty thousand people turn up. It's like, so this is a thing. Yeah. But cool. Um, but yeah, as I say, it's going to be whoever does it best will rise to the top. Yeah. And then Twitch's role in it all is really to kind of nurture that and see what direction everyone's going in and try and work with as many people as possible because ultimately we, we want to just see as many people broadcasting and we want as many people watching as possible. So SBS2 recently aired one of like the first esports things on free-to-air TV. Is one of Twitch's goals to destroy television? So we actually worked with AEL on that one. I actually <laughs> really do see a lot of crossover with television and Twitch Did at the moment. Did you work with them to infiltrate and bring down television? Just <laughs> no, could you imagine me as Bond? I'm like, all right. So there's still a lot of crossover. Like there's still a lot of people watching TV. At the end of the day, it's it's not about us wanting to destroy television. <laughs> it's basically what is the viewer doing? What does the viewer want? And the thing that Twitch has got, it's accessible content whenever you want it. And I think that's the thing. Like you you look at the way that people are consuming content now. It's completely different. Like people want video when they want it and Twitch is a platform that allows you to do that. So for us to say we're gonna destroy television, no, that's, that's, that's not our position. What we wanna do is go, we know our audience loves this, there must be more people out there that love this as well, and we're just gonna keep go going just and finding find those people. Yeah. Exactly. And if there's a place for television for it, great. Yeah, <laughs> but at the same, and yeah. if there's not? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, it's literally just however a viewer wants to watch, we're just gonna listen to them and, and implement products that are for our viewer and are for our community, and we're a really, really community-focused company. Um, so that, that's where we stand at the moment, and we will shift depending on what our audience wants and how they want to consume our content, really. Yeah. So obviously with eSports, you have big tournaments with millions of people watching. How do you deal with the Twitch chat in that situation? So we would recommend anybody that is running a tournament to reach out to our ad. We have an amazing ad team. Um, they are some of the best moderators in the world. We would recommend talking to us first if you're not sure about how to run those. Twitch has got a huge amount of moderation tools that you can run yourself. So basically if you find people in the community that you trust or if you've got employees, you make them moderators. And you basically, if you see anything that's coming through on that chat, you get rid of it instantly. You just ban them, you time them out. If, they're, if they come back after their time out and they haven't learned their lesson, get rid of them again. Um, so it's really about each personal channel. So each channel we treat as their own brand and as they, they run their product and they run their, their community in the way that they want to run it. And that includes big eSports tournament providers. So at the end of the day, it's, it's up to them on their brand to kind of go, we want to pick the best moderators, we want to make sure this is all good. At the end of the day, like, we will take it further if it needs to be taken further. But it's very much a case of this is your community, this, we want you to run it, here are all the tools to run it. And if you have any questions, reach out to us. Like we're not a faceless company. Yeah. We have people that we can take you through the chat. We can take you through these bots and these moderation tools. People will always flock to the main channel. Yeah. And again, to, going back to what I was saying before, each broadcaster has their own identity. They've also got their own community. So if that community, like, if they're a Dota streamer, for example, and then they all want to watch the international and talk about it with themselves, yeah. the, the broadcaster can host that and then they can all sit in the broadcaster's channel and, and chat about it. But it's really up to the broadcaster and the individual to want to do that with their community and they know that their community is going to come in and have a chat about it. 
So streaming has always been quite intrinsic to how esports is consumed. Where do you see the future of streaming and esports? I think they're always going to be synonymous because they have come up. They've almost been Grown raised. Up they, they almost have. It's like the, the the scale of esports has happened because of the scale of Twitch at the same time. Like I, I have no problem in saying that. In terms of where it's going, I think for us, we, we're only really going to focus on the broadcast side and the Twitch side. Um, we're going to just be looking out to our market and saying, okay, what do you guys like watching? And this is the, and going back to what I was saying before. We're literally just going to be asking questions from the community and saying, well, how do you guys like watching it? What do you guys like watching? And then we want to get involved with the right people and, and take it into the right areas. So to, I, to be honest, I can't give an answer on the future of it because at the end of the day, it's up to the audience and how they consume everything. Yeah, very cool. Well, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, no worries. Solid, solid high 10. What do you think of uh, esports streaming numbers and viewership? Let me know in the comments below, or if you'd like to internet hang out with me, you can follow me on Twitter, at Ankaradio. As always, always remain safe and non-toxic on the internet, like a little glue stick, right out. <laughs>